Hey, my name is Tara Marie, and Mare Makes is mostly a knitting podcast. I currently live in Hamilton, Ontario, which is situated on the traditional unceded territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wandat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you've got some cozy knitting to work on. Oh boy, it feels like it has been forever since I have filmed a podcast episode. My plans just did not work out the last few weeks. I had intended to take a very short break on the podcasting. Um, my hope was to release a different kind of video, and I filmed the video, I did all of the planning, I did all of the post work on it, including probably 95 to 98% of the editing, so that video was almost completely done, but I don't want to post it. I don't, I don't like it, <laughs> and my hope was that if I kept working on it, I would grow to love it. Um, and I also had a few thoughts where it was like, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect in order for me to publish it. My podcasts certainly aren't perfect, and I, you know, I'm not 100% happy with any of those. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll just release it. But the more I sat on it, the more I just thought, no, I, I want to do better. So last night I sort of hunkered down and worked on it um, for a few hours, just the more pre-planning um, for filming it. So I'm feeling much better about it now. I'm going to refilm it and then hopefully sometime soon I will have uh, a different kind of video to share with you. Another thing that happened um, is that I had planned to record a podcast um, last weekend but last week I got horribly horribly sick just like you know aches and pains and fever and coughing and sneezing and I kept testing negative for the virus so I probably just had the flu or something I'm still not a hundred percent recovered but I'm feeling so much better and uh, normally I record on Saturday mornings when my boyfriend goes to Tai Chi practice, um, but this is a Wednesday afternoon. It is my lunch hour, and uh, my boyfriend is out of the house right now as well, and I, I just I still feel like I can't record when he's home, which is a bummer because we both work from home, and uh, there aren't too many instances where he's out of the house, so... I do really hope to get over that because I can't just spend my life <laughs> waiting for my boyfriend to leave. So since it has been a while, I do have a fair bit to share with you and not a whole lot of time. So let's just get into it. I didn't even mention what I'm wearing, but if you have watched my previous episodes, you already know. I somewhat recently finished the sweater um, sometime in the summer. It is the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I do not have any finished objects to share with you, but I do have a few pretty substantial works in progress, and I do have some acquisitions as well. Of course I do. In episode number three, I shared with you that I was going to participate in the Wooly Knit and Knitting Traditions Knit Along going on um, until December. Just to give a brief overview, the whole idea is that you use a British wool sold by Wooly Knit. They are promoting um, British wool breeds. So I ordered a cone of the British wool four ply from Wooly Knit, and here it is. The cone is um, a lot smaller than it was when I ordered it, but I'll show you a photo of what it looked like before. Um, yeah, I've knit up quite a bit. This is the color Morning Frost. So it is a strand of like a creamy white yarn with a strand of a, uh, a really beautiful gray and they're just sort of uh, applied, twisted together. It is a fingering weight 100% wool and I thought that it would be very scratchy. 
um, because you know it's not like a merino. They are sheep bred in the northern hemisphere. They're not known for being uh, the softest sheep in the world, but this is actually very, very nice, especially after blocking. I am so pleased with this. The cost is amazing. You get so much yarn in a single cone and it's just been beautiful to work with. It's definitely been interesting to work with. It's been very different from any yarn that I've worked with in the past. One thing that's been really interesting about this yarn in particular is that it doesn't actually have a ton of memory before blocking, which is something that I usually associate with uh, wools is that they will have a lot of memory. So for instance, um, when you have to pull your stitches out using this yarn, it it doesn't end up looking like uncooked ramen noodles. <laughs> it's uh, It's quite loose actually. I have a whole clump of it right here because I had to pull out a whole bunch. Um, but <laughs> here is some frogged yarn and the yarn had been knit up for quite a long time and as you can see it's still like quite straight. Um, I would say that there are some pros and cons to having a relatively memory free yarn. Um, a pro is of course that uh, if you do have to frog it or pull out some stitches that you're able to very easily re-knit it again without it being all like kinky and bumpy and weird. Um, the only con that I can think of is that if you were to say drop a whole bunch of stitches, the stitches may not necessarily keep within their, their loop keep within the stitch <laughs> in time for you to pick it up with your needle. It may just slip right out, but I haven't really had that problem. They've actually stayed in place quite well. So I knew that I wanted to try out this yarn and I knew that I wanted to participate in the knit along, but I had no idea what I wanted to make. So once I received the yarn, I did knit up some swatches. So the first one that I knit up um, I just used, I can't remember what needle size, but uh, it was quite small. And so this is the yarn held single. Um, those stitches are quite fine. Hopefully I'm not screaming into the microphone right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, it knits up into this like beautiful marled color. And I absolutely love the fabric that it has created. When you are knitting with this wool, it's definitely very lumpy bumpy, which I will show you soon. So I was a little bit concerned, but after blocking, it really does smooth out a lot and it looks really beautiful. So I really loved this. I wanted to make something using this, but knowing myself and knowing that I have also signed up for a second sweater knit along, I just feel like I'm not ready for a fingering white sweater on a deadline. That's just, it's too much. I'm too slow of a knitter. That's so intimidating. <laughs> um, so while I do love this, um, it was not meant to be right now. So after that, I decided to try knitting up a couple swatches um, using two strands held together. So I wound up a big old cake with this one here, I got a little bit carried away. Well, no, I think that's a pretty uh, decent sized swatch, but I didn't have a whole lot left for the second one that I made and I didn't want to cake up uh, even more yarn. So I, again, I can't remember what needle sizes I used, but it was just really interesting to see um, what stockinette would look like using the yarn held double. And I just really love that very subtle, marled effect like it does still read as like a gray sweater but then when you look up close there's just so much more detail and like i said um you know it feels so beautiful once it's actually blocked it still feels quite good while knitting with it it feels a lot better than i expected it to but it just smooths out so beautifully and i wouldn't call it a furry yarn but i would call it a bit of a hairy yarn i don't know if you'll be able to tell but if not I will throw in some photos but it definitely you know it just feels like a true wool which maybe is a weird thing to say because <laughs> I work with a lot of wool 
but you know, all wools feel different. One thing that I do find really fascinating about this yarn is how much the yarn expands after blocking. So I'll show you quickly here if I can get myself sorted. So I know this isn't the best way of showing you, but uh, this strand here is unblocked and then those two strands hanging from my swatch there are blocked and it just really expands so much and you'll be able to see that really well um, in my work in progress that I'm about to show you. So anyway, I loved this. I figured this was going to be a lot easier than working with the single fingering weight gauge. So I think this knits up to like more of a, I think it's a DK weight. So I had a look through my Ravelry favorites to try to find something to knit with this. I had no idea what sweater I wanted to make. I kept noticing that I was being very drawn to projects that featured a broken rib stitch. So broken rib, if you're not aware, rather than doing like a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, um, for every row, you do it in alternating rows. So one row or round is knit one purl one and then the next round is just knit straight across so you end up with a column of stockinette and then a column of garter and it turned out that i already had one of these patterns in my library a while ago i purchased the book ready set raglan by pom pom press and yeah, it has a whole bunch of really beautiful raglan sweaters inside. I have not yet knit one, so I was really excited to have an excuse to dive into the book and pick one out. So I have been knitting the Merowin, Merowin, Merowin sweater um, by Megan Fernandez and Lydia Gluck. And here she is. So I have quite a bit done. I have um, almost the entire body so it does have a split hem and I left one side unknit just because I would like to block it first and make sure that I am absolutely happy um, with the length that I've chosen before I knit a few inches of unnecessary one by one rib but as you can see I have also knit the collar so I went down a needle size and the pattern does ask you to do a standard bind off, but I chose tubular bind off instead. Um, and then so far, the only other modification I have made is that I ripped out my first sleeve. I had gotten, I want to say about a third of the way down and it was just so big so so big and I compared it to um, the last raglan that I have knit which was the Bonnie cardigan by Orlan Souche and yeah the sleeve was just enormous and it just seemed way too big so I ripped it all out and I think I put in about another day or so of knitting um, so I reduced it by about uh, 10 stitches and I think it's working out a lot better um, so I think what I'm going to do is knit this entire sleeve and then I will block the whole thing, see if I like the sleeve length, see if I like the body length, and then continue. But I'm feeling really, really good about my timing. I was really concerned um, that I just wasn't going to get very far very quickly with this. Um, broken rib, while beautiful, can be a little bit tedious because half the sweater is just knit one purl one which is a lot, especially as an English style knitter. It's a lot of just passing that working yarn back and forth all day long. But yeah, it's actually been quite a nice knit and I'm really loving the way that the yarn is feeling. And I actually did already, <laughs> I did one block already. I have this habit of blocking my sweaters usually like two or three times, including the final block. But you will probably be able to see where that block occurred. So like I mentioned before, um, the yarn really does expand upon blocking. And so there is that line there where I stopped to block it. And I'm glad that I did that because I was a little bit worried about this yarn. Also, like I mentioned before, um, it can be quite... Um, quite wavy, quite bumpy. The stitches really aren't all that even looking. 
And another thing too is that it looks like there is a ton of space um, between my stitches, if that makes sense. Like it looks very airy or loose, like my stitches are loose, which really they shouldn't be. But then after blocking, um, it really does fill in. And it also, because there is less open space between the stitches, it almost seems to lighten up the yarn. Like it looks lighter in color, if you can see that. And you know, the stitches do still, um, you know, they're not perfectly straight lines the way that you might get with a much smoother yarn or the way that you might get um, holding yarn single that may have um, an effect on it as well but it's good enough for me like it still just looks like a beautiful wool sweater in my opinion so I'm also really excited to see how the collar will block because I did not have that um, knit up when I blocked it but yeah, it's just, it's knitting up into such a lovely sweater that I can't wait to wear. I'm really excited to have a light gray sweater in my wardrobe. And I also really like this, uh, this faux seam going on. I think that's really pretty. And yeah, it's just been such a nice, comforting knit. You know when you just have like almost a whole sweater just in your lap? and you're just knitting away on it and it just feels so good. Ugh, oh, I just love that feeling. <laughs> My expectation was that I was going to have a second sweater whip to share with you today, which I do, but my thought was that it was going to be the dream sweater as part of the knit along held by Unit Toronto. The cast on for that sweater is supposed to be this Saturday, which is November 5th. Um, but I don't think I'm going to have the yarn for it. And I did sort of anticipate that this might be an issue. I've been having a few customer service problems. <laughs> so I don't know when my yarn is actually going to arrive. So because I did expect that this might happen, I started another sweater and I'm so happy that I did because I'm getting so much work done on it and it's nice to just have um, another major project on the go while I do wait for that yarn. It is a bit of a mess right now, um, just threads and stitch holders all over the place because as usual I'm working on it piece by piece, but I am working on the Terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit. And here is what I've got so far. So it's not uh, an insignificant amount of knitting. Still a fair bit to go, but oh man, it is just lovely to work on five millimeter needles. So nice, it's been a while since I've done that. My original hope was to use um, the base yarn for this on its own. I've mentioned it before, but it is the Menos del Uruguay Alpaca Heather in the color Toast. So it is a 70% wool, 30% alpaca yarn, and it's just so beautiful, and I love the color of it. The color is like exactly what I had in mind, but when I end up a swatch for it um, in the gauge that I preferred for this yarn, you know, with the stitch size and the drape that I wanted, it was just way off. And I would have had to have gone up many um, garment sizes, which was totally fine and I was prepared to do that. But before I had ever touched that yarn, I had purchased this um, Stannis Garn Tin Silk Mohair to go with it. Um, and so I didn't want to <laughs> almost like sully this beautiful yarn by adding something else to it. Like I just wanted to appreciate this as is, but I figured before I just jump into this big project, um, I will knit up a swatch. So I had a swatch of each and I went to my boyfriend and I asked him which one he preferred. Like if he were to have a sweater, which one would he like best? And he did choose the one with the mohair. But I'm very happy that I did 
did add the mohair. I think adding it really um, sort of goes along with the spirit of the terrazzo sweater. It, uh, you know, I'm using a solid color base yarn. I'm not using like the multicolored Noro that the pattern calls for and that a lot of people make their terrazzo sweaters with, but I think adding that mohair does add um, like the feeling of those little color speckles. It does add a lot of dimension to it. And since I did have to go up um, to a larger needle size than I originally would have preferred with this alpaca yarn, I think that adding the silk mohair, you know, fills in the gaps of that looser gauge. So I'm very, very pleased. I cannot wait for this sweater to be finished. I am just obsessed with any um, shoulder and sleeve that looks like this. So I haven't actually looked up the like terminology. I don't know if this is considered a saddle shoulder or not, but I would definitely call this um, a set in sleeve, which is just my favorite. I just, I love the way that it slopes along the shoulder. Oh, it's just so beautiful and it fits so well. And I love that it's seamless. So that actually was the main reason that I chose the terrazzo sweater was because I wanted a looser fitting turtleneck that had that sort of sloped shoulder rather than just a standard raglan. And I also didn't want to do any seaming. So the only part of this sweater that I am not enjoying is this neckline. I used to be like a hardcore fangirl for Twisted Rib. I loved how tight the stitches were and I do still really love it. I have never knit um, a reversible Twisted Rib in the round, so that's definitely been interesting. And I really don't mind it. Like you have to um, purl through the back loop, which I know a lot of people really hate. I don't mind it all that much. The only thing I'm not enjoying is just how like tight and fiddly this part feels. And I originally went down a, so the body is knit with a five millimeter. And then I believe you're supposed to go down to a four millimeter for the neck. So I tried that. And even though I had the right number of stitches, I couldn't even get it over my head. And it almost like hurt to knit, like it was just so tight. I don't know if that's just a gauge issue for me, like a, a tension issue. I do tend to hold things pretty tight. I hold my needles tight, I knit tightly. Um, but yeah, I couldn't get it over my head. So I ripped it out and I decided to remain with the five millimeter needles and it's going much better. I can get it over my head, but it's a bit of a struggle. I'm really hoping that blocking will resolve that issue because I don't want to struggle every time I put this on. So I think as usual, I will finish the collar, I will knit a sleeve, and then I will block just to see how everything is fitting. But I'm loving how the body is fitting. I am actually shocked I made gauge with the right needle size. That almost never happens. <laughs> I think that's all that I have to share right now about the terrazzo sweater, so hopefully next time I see you, it will be done. My final work in progress to share with you today is a project that I mentioned in the last episode, so I have gotten more than halfway through it. Um, it looks a little ridiculous, what I've got so far. Uh, it's this. <laughs> it is this tiny little fingerless mitten. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so it is ribbed, so it looks really, really tiny, but it does fit me. So it is the Ladies Mittens with Thumb, which is adapted from a pattern that was published in 1885. So I do, I'm hiding like a whole bunch of ends in here. Yeah, there's a lot in there, but I'll put it on so that you can see how it fits. And there it is. It fits me absolutely perfectly. I have made quite a number of mods to the pattern, including um, the number of stitches cast on. There were a few things that I did just to narrow um, the palm a little bit, just to sort of make it really hug 
um, where my fingers begin. <laughs> I also did a provisional cast on just because I wasn't sure how long I wanted them to go down my arm. So I figured I would just knit two of them to roughly this size and then I could choose whether or not I wanted to continue. In the pattern, um, it does ask you to knit quite a number, probably not quite a number, probably like four or five rounds in a different color at the top. So I didn't do that. I only did, I think, about two rounds before doing a tubular bind off. And I chose this white color. I believe it is, uh, yeah, it's knitting for olive merino. But I'm not sure how much I like it. I feel like maybe I'll want to do a darker color instead. But it was really interesting to see how the white knitting for olive paired with the pink um, silk mohair that I've been using. So I do for the most part have this one finished, um, except for the length that I will probably add and I may swap out the color. Um, and then I've got the other one on the go here. But I just, I love the way these colors are combining. I don't know what I'll be able to show you because the fingering weight yarn that I'm using turned into an absolute mess when I tried to uh, wind it into a cake. And I think that might just be the fault of my tools. My ball winder is terrible. Uh, I've had it for a really long time and it's not been working very well for probably like almost 10 years now. Um, and I just haven't bothered to replace it yet. It's just, I'd rather spend my money on yarn than improving my tools, but I, I, would like to flip that around and stop buying yarn and improve my tools. So anyway, all that to say, I don't know how I can really show you all that well the yarn that I've got. I can maybe show you <laughs> what's in my project bag here. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. It's not too, too bad, but there's like, there's three little loose cakes in there. It's going to be such a nightmare, but it's okay for now. Thankfully, the mohair is cooperating. This is the Isair Silk Mohair. I did talk about these yarns um, a little bit more in my last episode. But yeah, like I said, they're just absolutely stunning together. I'm really excited to have a full set. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but it would be really nice just to have these for work because my hands just get so cold when I'm sitting there typing away. One thing that is absolutely obvious, but just never occurred to me because I never thought about it, is how when you are working with a finer gauge, such as with a fingering weight yarn and two and a half millimeter needles, when you do pair mohair with it, the mohair is very dense and it becomes a much, much fluffier fabric. So I've only ever used mohair in like sweaters so far. So like for instance with the terrazzo sweater, you know, it is a very fluffy sweater, but it feels like you're still seeing a lot of the base yarn. It's more spread out because the stitches are a lot bigger. But with this, it almost looks like the whole thing is made out of mohair. Like you can of course still see the base yarn, but the mohair is just so concentrated and it's made it so very fluffy. And so that has been a really uh, nice discovery that if I knit something in a smaller gauge with mohair, it will be extra, extra fluffy. Before I move on to my acquisitions, I do want to make a little bit of an announcement. And that is that I have started a coffee page. Everyone seems to call it Ko-Fi. It does look like lo-fi, but I always thought it was called coffee because you buy someone a coffee, you know? Whatever it's called, coffee, ko-fi, I have one. So I will provide a link in the description, but I just thought that I would put it out there in case anyone has been enjoying the content that I've been making so far, you're excited for more, maybe you just want to throw a coffee my way. All of you have just been so lovely and so supportive. And anytime you leave a comment or subscribe, it just means the absolute world to me. That is, you know, 
so much more that I could even ask for, <laughs> but uh, I am still getting into the swing of social media again. It's been quite a long time since I've really actively participated in any social media at all. So now I'm kind of like jumping into everything all at once. I have very slowly started to post on Instagram again, so I will have a link to that as well. So all that is to say, that I won't be super, super active on every platform at first, but if you want to follow me anywhere um, as time goes, that will certainly ramp up and I am really, really excited for that. So thank you. My first acquisitions of the day are a couple books. Uh, they are both from Lina Publishing and I believe it was Tiffany Liu from Tiffany's Yarn Corner. And on her podcast, Tiffany mentioned that she recently picked up a copy of 52 Weeks of Socks from Chapters, which is a Canadian retailer. So I went and had a look and sure enough, it was still on sale. So I picked up a copy of that. Oh, it's just such a stunning book and I can't believe it has 52 patterns in here. I I keep saying that I'm not a sock knitter and I'm not. I've only knit two completed pairs in my life, but I keep buying sock yarn. And now I have these 52 patterns to say nothing of the individual PDF patterns I've purchased in my life, which is a lot. So I think I'm destined to one day be a sock knitter. Along with 52 weeks of socks, chapters also had strands of joy which I am very excited about. Um, so if you're not aware, this book has 20 color work patterns by Anna Johanna. Um, I have not knit anything of hers yet. I do have quite a number of them I'm having a look at, but I pretty much bought this book just for the cover pattern. I've never knit a color work sweater, but it's just so gorgeous. Like I love this open cardigan with the very wide uh, buttonless button band and that shade of green with the gray. Oh, it's just so beautiful. So I really hope to buy that, buy that. I really hope to make that one day and I'm really happy that I bought uh, this book while it was on sale. And it just, it feels so weird to me that Lina books are being sold at chapters. It's like this major bookstore. It's like a Barnes and Noble or something. I don't know. That was just like, oh, wow, Lina. Okay, cool. There is also one more thing that I wanted to show you that it feels channel related. It isn't really, <laughs> but it feels like it to me. And that is this little guy. <laughs> so uh, this is a little stuffed sheep that my boyfriend went and got for me as a uh, a channel gift. He um, <laughs> drew this little uh, sheep and cone of yarn with some needles, which is adorable. And you know, he like wrote a little note on the back just to sort of congratulate me on putting together this YouTube channel because I think he knows that I've been wanting to do it for a long time. And yeah, it was just, just, <laughs> really really cute like such a cute little present and <laughs> we just love his like silly little face it's like kind of lopsided so my boyfriend Merrick thought that uh, I should call him Bobbin which I think is so cute <laughs> and so uh yeah his little nickname is Bobby and he's just so sweet and so soft and so squishy and I do love stuffed animals I have um <laughs> I now have uh, two sheep, so this guy is named Lambert, and I've had him, I think, since before I was a year old, so maybe it was sort of uh, prophesied that I would become a knitter, that I've held on to uh, this little sheep for my entire time on this earth, so... Now I've got two of them and it just feels very appropriate and I wanted to share. <laughs> so that was a very, very sweet gift. And now it feels like Mare Makes has a little mascot, a little bobbin. As for the yarn, 
I shouldn't be buying any more yarn, but I did buy some yarn. I was looking for something very specific for a future gift knit. So this is what I was looking for. It is the Party of Five mini skein yarn set, mini skein set uh, from Sweet Georgia Yarns, which is a Canadian yarn company if you haven't heard of them. So uh, this is five little skeins in their Tough Love sock base. Um, which is a pretty standard sock yarn. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. So I was looking absolutely everywhere for this particular set with these particular colors because I have a very particular gift in mind for a very particular person. And I just thought that this set was perfect for it. So I was looking everywhere, couldn't find it. The only place that I could find it where I... So there were a few places that I saw it, but I also, I also fell in love with this one. And so I wanted to buy this one for myself. So I was trying to find a retailer that had both of these available. And the only one that I could find was Eat Sleep Knit in Georgia. I used to have an obsession with Eat Sleep Knit. They have a game called the Yarnathon. And they just, they have all these like cute little prizes and you earn badges by doing different things throughout the year with your knitting. Um, and you know, it's not all just related to purchasing yarn. It's knitting up certain things or knitting in certain places. There's like a whole myriad of ways that you can earn badges. And so when you earn badges and you purchase enough yardage, you have different opportunities to earn prizes. And you know, I'm Canadian. I can't afford the conversion. I can't afford the shipping, but I have bought so much yarn over the years from Eat Sleep Knit just because I find the game so much fun to play. So when I found these two yarns there, I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it and I'll buy a few more things while I'm there. Along with opportunities for prizes using the Yarnathon and earning badges, they also usually give you a lot of little treats um, with your package. So this time they gave me uh, some Oreos and a lollipop, which is just so cute. Um, I don't know if they did a little bit extra for the month of October. I'm not too sure. It's been a while since I've ordered from them. So they also send you these cute little scratch cards. And I actually have like a small pile of scratch cards to send back because I have... Uh, won some money to spend at the store. So with this one here, I did end up winning uh, $5. So, you know, it's just a typical scratch card. You scratch up little boxes and if you get three that match, you get that prize. And it's just so much fun to use these little scratch cards <laughs> every time you order from them. And I'm very, very glad that I did purchase from them because it's not something I want to get into, and I'm sorry for, like, teasing a topic here. There's been some yarn drama, and I don't want to get into it because this isn't a drama channel, but what I will say is that Eat Sleep Knit are a wonderful, wonderful retailer, and they are out quite a lot of money. So, they could use any support that they get, in my opinion. Um, I may just end up purchasing from them in the near future just because they're so lovely and their customer service is amazing and they've just, they've brought so much joy into my life, especially during periods when I really needed it. So I will just say, if you browse their shop and there's something you like and you can afford it and you can afford the shipping, go for it because they're wonderful. I didn't even like tell you about uh, these skein sets that I've got. So uh, this one is called Bloom and Blossom. And as you can see, it goes from sort of like a peachy pink to like a purpley plum sort of color. So in each of these sets, you get a little more than 500 yards. So I think for most people, that's enough for a pair of socks. So yeah, you could just make like a really lovely gradient with these. I I don't have a set plan. I just saw this set and knew that I needed them. 
So one day these will be socks. And then this one is called Seashore. So for this one, I'll go through the color names. So this is Birch, Apricot, West Wind, Shoreline, and Beach House. So yeah, just a really lovely um, little set. I like the way that all of these colors go together. And like I said, I had something very particular in mind. I don't have a set deadline. There is a deadline that I would like to hit, but it is thankfully many months out, so. Next up, as part of my Eat Sleep Knit purchase, I have this beautiful, beautiful skein by Emma's Yarn, and the color is called Foxy Lady. It is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 255 yards. My hope for this yarn is to make the Opulent Plunge Bra by Taylor Owen. It is such a beautiful little bralette, and I'm pretty sure I tried to find a yarn that was um, close in fiber composition to the yarn that Taylor chose, so I'm really hoping that even though this is a super wash yarn, it will hold. It's not something that I'm going to be making for support purposes. Thankfully, I don't need a whole lot of that anyway, but I just thought that a little cabled bralette would be so beautiful in this sort of red orange rust color. The yarn base is Simply Spectacular DK, and like I said, it is by Emma's Yarn. Eat Sleep Knit does, for the most part, specialize in indie dyed hand painted yarns. I do remember um, a number of years ago, people were really begging Eat Sleep Knit to carry um, something a little bit more affordable because they wanted to participate in things like the Yarnathon, but they weren't necessarily able to afford to purchase everything um, from indie dyers. So they did bring on Cascade. I've worked with a fair bit of Cascade in my life. I know that I knit a lot with Cascade um, in college. It was really great to have again an affordable option but I've never tried their sock yarn so I decided to take the opportunity to try the Cascade Yarns Heritage Sock. So it is yet another 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. I feel like this um, purpley color is showing up quite bright and saturated on camera but it really is more of like a lilac color like it is saturated but um not not as much as is showing up what color is this i don't know if it has a name for the color i don't see anything on the label but then this one here is kind of a marled uh gray and yeah, again, I have no plans for these. I just really wanted to try a different yarn. I wanted to see what Cascade had in terms of sock yarn. So I'm quite excited to try these out. And finally, the last yarns that I purchased from Eat Sleep Knit are from Malabrigo. And this yarn is the Silky Merino in the color black. It's a little bit washed out, but it is a very deep, true black. And this yarn I purchased to supplement what I already have in stash. So <laughs> the Malabrigo Silky Merino is another of my, you know, long time ago purchases where I wasn't thinking 100% clearly about what I was doing and what I was buying and what it was for. So... Uh, my very first experience with this Silky Merino yarn, I had purchased a couple skeins to make a cowl and oh, I just loved it. It was so soft and the colors were so beautiful together. It just felt absolutely divine around my neck and I was like, I want a sweater made out of this. So I bought, I believe, six skeins of this, um, hoping to make a black sweater. But as we know with single ply Merino yarns, um, they will pill quite a bit and I don't know exactly what the silk will have to offer My hope is that it will lend a little bit of strength, but I don't know 
So it's going to be a bit of an experiment, but I don't really mind because relatively speaking, it is an affordable yarn. So I'm pretty sure this was $10 American, which ends up being quite a bit Canadian, but I think it will be okay. I think if I can have like a really luxurious feeling, bouncy, lovely black sweater that is a joy to knit with, it'll be okay if I need to pill it every now and then. It'll be okay if it starts to look a little bit worn. And I think it'll just be a really good experiment for me to see how the um, merino and silk blend holds up. So it is a very interesting blend. It is 51% silk and 49% um, merino wool. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, but not all that much considering it's more than half silk. It is a DK weight yarn, and each one of these gives you about 150 yards. So I was really hoping to make um, like a very bouncy, like brioche or fisherman's rib sweater with it. I do have one potential sweater picked out, so we'll see how that goes, but who knows when I will get around to it. Uh, a lot of my yarn purchases, especially for sweaters, uh, just sort of sit there waiting until I'm ready. Um, which maybe isn't the best way to go about things because then I end up with a gargantuan stash, but that's just where I'm at right now. I think that is all that I have to show you today. I do have you know, there have been some other little projects that I've been working on, but nothing has really stuck, so I'll save it for when those do stick. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you do want to see more podcast episodes in the future, if you want to see what my sweaters look like once they're complete, please do consider subscribing to the channel. My name is Tara Marie, this is Mare Makes, and I will see you next time. Bye!